Oh man, WWDC 2022. That M2 MacBook Air, Watch OS 9. I'm a huge quantified self nerd and Apple Watch really scratches that itch so I'm giddy. And seeing as how I've been using this second gen iPad Pro 12.9 as my laptop for the last couple of years or so, Stage Manager has my curiosity, but we'll see if it can hold my attention. For this video though, we're gonna focus on what I've actually been playing with, iOS 16. I've been playing with iPad OS 16, but don't currently have an M1 iPad to test all of the newness. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through what some of those features they announced on iOS actually look like in my real world use. So these are my early impressions based on early tinkering. Let's get into it. First, let's set the proper expectations here. Some things could change before the final release in the fall, but what I'm seeing so far I really like. Let's start with a couple of the features most folks will use most often when it comes to their phone, and that is iMessage. iOS 16 gets a mix of new features here, along with the operating system getting smarter overall, and those features all converge in iMessage, making it even more useful for all of you blue bubble users. For the basics, you'll be able to undo send messages, which is basically unsend messages within a 15 minute window, though you'll get a message telling you that your message may still show up on devices running older versions of iOS and deleted messages will be able to be recalled for up to 30 days. You can also edit a message after the fact, though that has a time limit on it as well. Twitter, take notes. The recipient will see that the message has been edited on their end. I sent messages to my Android device and these features appear to be blue bubble only naturally. But a couple of features which don't depend on the recipient's taste in phones are the new and improved dictation and visual lookup. Dictation looks like this. It will automatically add punctuation if you allow it to. I hope it doesn't make you feel like a clown emoji. You start voice typing on your device and now you have a little microphone icon floating above the input box. The keyboard stays on the screen and you can highlight and either delete or re-dictate words as you go. You can even insert emojis. This improved dictation automatically punctuates sentences for you and has been pretty good so far in my testing. Now, visual lookup isn't an iMessage feature, but I can see it getting a lot of use there. Hit your Photos app, tap and hold on the subject of an image, and iOS now cuts that out for you. I played with this with multiple images, and whether it was an image I took with this phone or an image that was imported into the phone, iOS did a really good job of cutting it out. It even works with paused video. At this point, it appears to have some limitations in terms of subject selection, that limitation generally being based on how well your subject is separated from the background in the image. And speaking of cutting things out and intelligent, live text can also now recognize and convert currency and translate text in the camera via quick actions. I'm not in London right now, but pulling up this web result with pounds, you can see the conversion. And this page full of Korean text, now I'm fully updated on all the happenings in the world of BTS. And you know what's even flashier than BTS's dance moves now? Your lock screen. A number of changes and updates were shown in the keynote, and I have to say, they're pretty snazzy. First, your notifications now accumulate at the bottom of the screen so you can better enjoy that lock screen wallpaper. And if you have some app that sends you real-time updates, cluttering up your notifications, you now have a live activity section for those apps like sports app notifications or fitness apps running and updating you as you exercise. But the biggest change here is your ability to customize your lock screen now, and it's pretty intuitive for Apple users. It's about time. 
Just like switching watch faces on your Apple Watch, you're going to press and hold, and that brings up the lock screen carousel. Yeah, that's why I'm gonna call these lock faces. That's why I'm calling them, lock faces. Let's see if that catches on. You can have multiple lock faces and connect them to your focus modes. So you can have a lock face for your work, home, or lazy weekends. However you have your focus modes configured. But wait, there's more. Going deeper, you can easily customize those lock screens or lock faces, looks by swiping or tapping on a field and get all granular with it. Doing that allows you to control the clock fonts and colors. And just above the clock, you can add a simple widget. Then below the clock, you can tap and add widgets which have been customized from those you'd have access to on your home screen. These are made specifically for this space and let you choose from those which are wider, rectangular, allowing for two at a time in the space to some smaller square widgets which give you the flexibility to add up to four in that space. But let's go even deeper, wallpaper. That background image is central to your customization for many of you, and this time around, you have a choice of Apple's new live wallpapers, which have a pretty neat feature in that they work in tandem with your unlock transitioning with an animation from your lock screen to your home screen. And if you don't want the live wallpaper, but don't know exactly what you want, Apple gives you a greatly expanded wallpaper app. It does quite a bit and now has a photos shuffle, which will cycle through pictures on your phone, either from your featured photos or from photos you've manually selected. When choosing your own photos as your wallpaper, one of the cool functions is the ability to take some depth effect photos, some of them, and customize effects around those. You have a few options and they make for some pretty cool effects. This isn't specific to the lock screen though and can be accessed from the settings menu by going into the wallpaper settings. The mail app has some improvements which I'm sure will be quite welcome for productivity enthusiasts. You can now schedule messages and it is straightforward. Please Apple, bring this to iMessage. Anyway, all you need to do is tap and hold the send arrow and you'll be presented with some quick options as well as the ability to choose a specific day and time. You can also triage messages to view at a later time. Jump into the message and click the arrow, then choose the mark for later option. Like scheduling send, you'll be presented with some quick options as well as the ability to pick a specific day and time that you wanna be reminded about that email message if you don't wanna deal with it right then. Also from the main screen, you can simply swipe right and choose the clock icon to do the same things. Apple Maps did of course see some updates with the improvements to 3D modeling, which look outstanding, and the ability to add over a dozen stops when you're planning a route. You can do that on your iPhone or on the desktop, then send it to your iPhone. And last but not least, shout out to my mom and her nonprofit, which runs transitional homes for women. Important work. Seeing the people she's helped and knowing some of their stories, I'm aware of just how important this last feature I'm gonna to touch on today is. It's called Safety Check. This allows you to stop sharing info with people and apps and is made for those who might be in abusive situations. It's really simple, and you can tell Apple really put a lot of thought into the design and those who may need to use it. For example, most menu items in the settings menu, when you back out of them, you're taken back into the main settings menu list. But when you're in the safety check app, which is in privacy and security, when you actually go into the menus to remove people's access to you, there's a heading up top which says quick exit. Tapping that immediately takes you completely out of the settings app altogether. To me, Seemingly small touches like that shows just how much thought went into protecting people's safety in precarious situations like those it was intended for. There are other odds and ends not talked about in the keynote, like seeing your connected Apple Bluetooth headphones in the settings menu now, and I'm sure we'll see more polish by the time iOS 16 is public but I put this on my daily driver, so I've been hammering it and it is relatively stable. And I really like what I've seen so far. The new features are intuitive, easy to use, very Apple all around. 
I can't wait to get into a future deep dive as we get closer to the official release and to talk about iPad OS as I use my iPad Pro as my laptop alternative, which over the years has actually become my daily driver, replacing my laptop carry. Though I may be changing that soon. M2 MacBook Air, I'm looking at you. So I'm Tashaka Armstrong for iMore. If any of the videos on this channel, the podcast have helped you, please consider hitting us with a thumbs up, subscribing, you know, clicking the belly thing so you'll be notified when we upload the latest uh, podcasts and reviews. If you have any questions about anything I talked about that I didn't answer in this video, please do feel free to leave those in the comments below. I'll get to them. Love chatting with you all. I will catch you on the next video.